My name's Dylan Belcher. I'm Mark Chang. And, and we're your English. Oh yeah, uh, Dylan just got a uh, Fender Bass Breaker 15, and I was like, you know what? Let's just both run two amps, and we're kind of experiencing a little bit of hearing loss, but <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah, <laughs> it was great. Uh, so today we're going to do the bucket list, which is, as everybody knows, most fans keep a long list of bands that they want to see live that yeah. may not play in a rural area like ours, or just may be a band that doesn't tour very much. Mm. Or that sells out consistently, like maybe Metallica or Tool, or somebody like that. It's hard to afford the ticket. Yeah. Um, before we get into that, I just want to talk to y'all a little bit about uh, your new album, Pursuit of Happiness, uh, yeah. coming out in April. Yeah. April April seventh. Um, how's uh, everything been so far, as as far as people listening to it and checking it out? It's been really good. I mean, we've had a lot of support lately, and we sold out of our uh, like sold a hundred albums at least in the first week we had them. Is that hard copies? Yeah. Yeah, just the physical copies. How's copy. the digital copies been? I know you're selling a lot, pretty much every outlet online. Yeah, the digital copies are obviously not as good as the physical right. copies, but uh, we have sold about 50 on there and some random songs, too. And that's pretty good, too, for independent release. Oh, you yeah. Know, and it's your debut, of course, right, too. Yeah, I didn't expect that one. <laughs> How many tracks are on that one? 12? 12. 12. Is there, personally, my favorite uh, track on that? Is the opener mask. Mm. So what? Did you write the lyrics for that song? Yeah. So what? What was the inspiration behind it? Uh, just kind of how I've seen the world and the people, really. I mean, I think it's a perfect opener for the album and stuff, just because it yeah. kind of lays out the rest of the way or whatever, you know. Yeah, it, it definitely does. And I heard your uh, radio spot too on was it Foxy. Foxy and Friends. I think it surprised him when you played that one. And oh, it yeah. got a little heavy for a few moments there. I think he was yeah. surprised. Yeah, we like were trying to keep it light, but they asked for more. Yeah, so yeah right. even before it, I was like, all right, yeah, you're going to have to keep an eye on those mics. He's going to yeah. be fucking screaming here in a second. Now, I kind of compare. I'm, I'm the type of person I normally don't like to compare one band to another because they're so different. Yeah. But you got kind of a unique sound that I kind of compared it to Oasis, Nirvana, and Florida. Oh, definitely. Kind of mixed together. Would you say any of those bands were inspiration for yourself? Oh, yeah. Nirvana's the reason I do what I do. Yeah, like Nirvana's <laughs> his favorite band. And we, like, a couple of years ago, we got like really heavily into Oasis. Oh, yeah. But I mean, I'd like to say we have a, like some Oasis, like early grunge undertones and like all the Brit pop, all that stuff kind of infused into it, but kind of modernized and throwing in like the textures of like Johnny Marr from the Smiths and yeah. Robert Keir uh, Robert Smith from the Cure, all that. Now Liam and Noel Gallagher are hard to match, you know, with both of them, you know, singing lead and backup. Oh and yeah. Even though Noel Gallagher and the Flying Birds, his solo project or whatever is great, but it's yeah. it's not Oasis. Yeah. But I think you all have that special factor when it comes to like your lead vocals and your backing vocals. It just sure. creates that harmony. Now, was there anything that was that instantly something you tried to do that worked? Uh, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much, down. yeah. We just loaded the we loaded the album down, and we've been trying to push like the rest of the band, but. Sing backup vocals because at any given point there are at least two harmonies yeah, on the I'm, chorus. Because I mean we've been playing music together for years and are kind of pretty in tune with each other right. and like at the at least decent somewhere in between the same level of each other. So, so we you kind of predict each other's moves where you're going. So. Yeah, and it's like kind of same direction musically. Yeah, it's like Dylan will send a song my way and. Like, I'll know instantly what he wants, and I'll think of some cool stuff that I'd like to throw in. And if he's like, man, that sucks, I'll trash the idea, start all over. But that, that's like one in 100 songs. Yeah. Now, it's mastered by Drew Thomas at Sage Audio. Yeah. Yep. How'd you get connected with him? Uh, well, uh, we weren't the first album that his brother John Chaney had recorded. And the guy before him, the guy before us did that through him. So uh, after we heard his album, we was like, oh, wow, that's pretty good. So, and it was a good 
really right? killer deal. So, you know. And yeah, like he did a great job. Other bands he's worked with, and I couldn't really find any. Do you know any other bands he's worked with before? Uh, just Austin Collins, the guy that recorded the album before us. He did a really solid job on it. That I don't, I couldn't tell you anyone else that he's and worked Sage with. Sage Audio is based in Nashville, right? Uh, yeah, I believe yeah. so. Now, as far as playing live, how, how many shows have, have y'all played? Do you think? Uh, probably about ten or fifteen. It's not been a it's not been huge at this point, but we are trying to book shows like up in Lexington. And right. Well, of course, in this area, it's really hard. You know, we don't really have a venue other than maybe like Bank Two Five Three or something like that yeah. here in the area. But we've got that, and like Bob Smokehouse, and yeah. even both of those are pretty limited. Which yeah. in rural areas in, in Appalachia, cover bands do much better than original bands. Oh yeah. You know, so like a, it's it's what bar patrons want to hear. Yeah. So they're they're not always the best um, musical fans, you know. They just oh, want to yeah. hear something they're familiar with, and they don't really appreciate creativity as much as. You know. Oh yeah, like, we, we've been in the position to where we we played our because I'm not going to do cover songs. Right. Like I mean, we'll do covers for fun, but it's going to be songs that we want to do. Right. Yeah, it's going to be like cool covers. I'm not like, doing for you with right. your own spin. Yeah. Oh yeah. I can definitely appreciate a cover song, mm-hmm. um, but I think that. If you're just making a carbon copy of that song, what's the point of doing it? Yeah, because so, I mean, we want to leave our mark. I'm not promoting Leonard Skinner. I'm promoting myself, you right. know. Uh, now, as far as uh, booking other shows, work. If somebody does want to book a show with Mirrored Image, where can they contact you? Uh, our Facebook, Instagram, email. Anyway, our email is uh, mirroredimagemusic at gmail dot com. And on Instagram, it's Mirrored Image Music. Now, getting into the bucket list. Um, oh. Like I said, I myself keep a long list of, of bands. and I try to knock out at least two or three mm. bands a year that I've really been wanting to see and, and put some new ones on there. Um, Dylan, we'll start with you. What's what's five bands that, that you want to see and give us a reason why each one? Okay. So I'll start with number five. Uh, I'm going to have to say Turnover. They released an album called Peripheral Vision. And I hadn't really heard of them before that, and it blew my mind. Like, I listened to it two months straight, and if I wanted to put on the record now, I could still listen to it again and not tired of it at all. I mean, they put on really killer live shows, and they always sound great. I mean, it's just, they're a really cool band. So speaking of not growing tired of an album, like, how do you feel of the importance of, like, re-listenability to an album? Oh, a lot. I mean, there are the records that, you can just listen to at a certain time and are always still good. But for ones that you can just put on any day, I mean, those are the ones that make the top ten. You know. four? Four would be Citizen. And they released an album called Youth a while ago, and I mean, it just blew my mind. Because, I mean, after I heard it, it kind of opened my eyes to a whole set of the new bands that I'd never heard before and stuff, and Youth is just another phenomenal record that's front to back perfect and they have really intimate shows and stuff that just like it's like a punk show yeah i mean it's really cool that's three three i would have to say corn i run a little metal here but corn i mean for both of us uh when we first started listening to them we were really young and i mean it just i'd never heard anything like that before in my life what album got you Issues. Issues oh, yeah. for sure. Issues is crazy good. Still my favorite metal album. I was album. around this when self-titled release. Oh, I yeah. I bought it the week it came out. Mm. And I've been a fan ever since. I've just seen them in May. Really? Uh, really? Probably made like the 12th time I've seen them. And it gets that point where I'm like, man, Corn's playing this show again. And I kind of wish it was somebody else because I've seen them so many times. Mm. But then when they start playing, I'm like, damn, I'm so glad they're playing. <laughs> Like, it's just every single time, you know, uh, and John Davis brings out the bagpipes mm. and Fieldy and his unique bass style, yeah. which I thought that show in May was their first show, one of their first shows back in the U.S. after that South American tour where Rob Trujillo's son was playing bass for him. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah I forgot about that. So I kind of thought, I was like, well, maybe Fieldy won't be back, mm. and I'll get to see Ty Trujillo play bass for him. And that'd just be cool to say. Like, yeah, I mean... Yeah. I'm always for those unique experiences where, you know, 
somebody's filling in or there's a guest vocalist or something that mm. it's not going to happen very much like at that same show in May that I saw them at I got to see Soundgarden mm. which was oh. the second time I've seen them but it was like his third or fourth from his last show of course I didn't Man. know it when I was watching them yeah. But it's yeah, just it's, a memory you'll cherish forever, which is what the bucket list is all about. Yeah. Fans yeah, well, you literally watched the last Soundgarden tour yeah. with Cornell. Yeah. I mean, if if they ever decide to get another vocalist, it's like I don't, you I don't. witnessed yeah. one of the last shows he ever performed. And I, I think really, like, those bands on your bucket list, my bucket list, your bucket list, or anybody's, is you have something, some special connection with those bands. Mm. And their live performance makes it so much more meaningful. Yeah. So that was three. What's two? Two, I'm going to have to say Radiohead. Radiohead. Just because, I mean, OK Computer, when I heard it, it just completely changed the way I play music and everything. Mm -hmm. and they obviously put on a killer live show if tuning their instruments can sound like a song, <laughs> which we talked about earlier. That's a band that I've never seen. And mm -hmm. I don't think they tour a whole lot anymore either, do they? Uh, or if probably. They do, it's not like a huge tour. It's like no. ten dates or something. I would say so. They seem like a pretty secluded band. Yeah. But uh, I mean, it's. I would just like to go see them because, like, they multitask so much. Yeah, yeah it's like ridiculous. Like uh, Johnny Greenwood will just have a guitar strapped around his neck and he'll just get down on the floor and play with his pedals or whatever. He'll play with like vocal processors and stuff to make Tom's voice sound weird. He'll play like keyboards. On like they're there, they bring out like drum sets and stuff. Like yeah. I mean, it's ridiculous. So it's what's how much your stuff. Number one overall bucket list band. Number one, I'm gonna have to say Foxy. I don't think I'm too uh oh, you need to check out Foxy. New I band. Mean, Dealer, I have a very special connection with the album because, like at the time, I started having really bad stomach problems and stuff like that, and I got celiac disease and lost all kinds of weight. And I mean, I wasn't healthy for a year, in the least bit. So, I mean, I heard that album and it just, I don't know, I just connected to it so hard. That and that they're crazy live. Like, their dynamics are crazy. They're a really mellow band and then next thing you know, they're just... It's just really intense and like, it's like just, it brings forth emotions that you wouldn't yeah. expect from many albums or whatever. And it's like, there's just so many instruments going on. It's like they got like keyboards and like their singer plays trumpets and like melodic is like a little, uh, uh, what are they called? The, the, mm -hmm. uh, either way, uh, and they get wild live. Yeah, like, like uh, yeah. We, I was watching an audio tree performance of them, and like like you said, he plays trumpet sometimes, and uh, he wasn't playing trumpet on the show, and I was just like, oh, that's kind of weird. And then later on at the end of it, he was like, I'd like to thank the session trumpet players for playing with us. I broke my nose last night, so I can't play. He broke his nose so stage diving the night before. Yeah, so he was singing just like, and I mean, he gets up there. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, it's crazy. He was singing like it was nothing, and he had just broke his nose the wow. night before. That's dedication. Yeah. I mean, so yeah, Foxy number one for sure. So, Marcus, move on to yours. What's number five? Oh, man. Mine's all over the place, and I'm not going to do, like, any particular order. Okay. But uh, one I've been getting into recently a lot is failure. Like, just... I've listened to Fantastic Planet on rotation probably like a million times, and it's just crazy to see how much that stuff they pull off. That like, like the albums are just packed, and there's only three members. So like, whenever there's not bass live, like their bass player or uh, Ken Andrews or whoever will just play the bass parts on a keyboard, and there'll be keyboards going on, guitars, like just their arrangements for their limitations. And I'm pretty sure they don't even run tracks or anything. Like it's crazy. I've always been a fan of trios mm. and how they're able to make their sound so big yeah. with just a three-member band. There's a, a a doom band that I've been listening to lately. Their name escapes me. Which is horrible, but the, they don't have a bassist, so the guitar player runs his guitar through a bass amp and a regular. And, and it comes across like that. And <laughs> I thought it's a really unique approach. Another one of my favorite examples of that is like local age, oh, yeah. just guitar player, drummer. He's got a bass pickup in the neck position of his guitar, and he just runs in the middle all the time. It's crazy. I didn't know that's what he did. Yeah, that's cool. I really like local age. I've seen them in Johnson City not too long. Ago. Oh, the Hideaway. Yeah. Yeah, I remember uh, they were advertising that, and then like the next week it was Hawthorne Heights. Yeah, they they played over there twice, 
And I was really surprised. You said they got the guest opening spot for that Metallica tour. Oh, I didn't know about that. Like, they ran a contest to see, um, like, it was like a radio network from each major city, Boston, Chicago, San Antonio, Dallas, and New York. It was like the places where that tour was stopping where they didn't have an opening act. Yeah. And so there was all kinds of different bands like that uh, were in the running for it. Mothership was one of them who I really liked. And Local H was one of them. And Shattered Sun was one of them, which is a really good Texas band. And it was supposed to be for bands, you know, that like to give them a push, like, you know, to put them, you know, give them a higher status than what they had. That's and cool. even though I'm, I'm a huge fan of Local H, I feel like it's a a little out of place because they already had a huge shot. They had a huge record yeah. deal. Mm. You know, it should have been given to somebody that was not not more deserving, but I hadn't had a chance to really show. Yeah, I mean, they had a chance like in the '90s, yeah. but you know, stuff happens. So what's well, your next one? Oh, my next one. Uh, they're probably like the least popular band on this list. Uh, Harriet. Uh, they had an album called American Appetite come out like early last year. And that's another one of those I've listened to like a hundred thousand times, I'm sure. And like their their albums, like they just have like crazy like synth sounds and stuff. It's like modern like synth pop meets like alternative rock, all this stuff. It's just just a perfect record. I don't really know how else to explain it. Yeah, and they're great live, which is a good thing. I think it's. Not only as a fan, but as a musician, if your tastes are varied and broad, it, I think it makes you a better musician. You know, if you're not s- stuck in, you know, tunnel vision with only listening to, like, say, power metal or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, you, like, I, I don't know. Like, there's just something good in every genre, like, no matter what it is. It's like, I don't know, like, maybe I'll get, like, really into, like, <laughs> something, like, ridiculous, like, Vaporwave or something, like, next week. So what's the next one here? Uh, I gotta agree with Dylan and say Corn, just because like Jonathan Davis goes wild live and like the dance and stuff, and like I just want to say I'm, I've been in the same room as that mic stand. Yeah, that is the coolest mic stand, stand of all time, and it's one of those I just can't elaborate on enough, just because like when I was like 11, 12 years old, I was begging my parents to get me a seven string Ibanez and. And, like, I've listened to their entire discography. Like, I think whenever we did it, uh, Stay What You Are was getting ready to come out. Or, what was that album called? Uh, Corn 3. Corn 3. Corn 3. Right. Yeah, that's what it was. We had, like, it was before all of that, and they've released, like, more stuff. I need to go back and listen to it, because I've heard, like, Paradigm Shift is amazing. And, like, just their stuff since Head came back. Everything I've heard sounds awesome, but I haven't really sat down and got I think to. That they really changed new you know, for uh, the entire genre, they've probably been the band that's kept it alive. Yeah. I, I think yeah, the, really. the whole genre probably would have died if it wasn't for them putting, continuing to put out good material. And right now, I think that there, uh, there's really a new metal comeback because you got all these old school, uh, late 90s bands that like I kind of cut my teeth on and grew up with, like uh, Dope and Orgy and El Nino and uh, saliva and corn and flaw that have new albums out or touring right now. Yeah. So and then you got newer new metal bands like Fire from the Gods and Siler that are really good and up and coming. So I, I think that we're gonna see a huge comeback in new metal. I'm hoping so, just because like with the Prophets of Rage stuff, like that should be inspiration for yeah. Zach Del to come back. And like the the most recent Deftones albums, I don't even know if they're technically considered new metal or not, but I always like to group them into that for some reason. But like their their most recent albums are phenomenal, like Diamond Eyes and like Gore especially is really good. Speaking of Prophets of Rage, of course the original Rage is a bucket list band for me, but I'll probably never get to see that because I don't think Zach's ever going to rejoin the band. Yeah. He kind of likes yeah. doing his own stuff, and he released a single about the time that Prophets of Rage dropped the main. That they were coming out. Did you see Prophets of Rage playing in Louisville in October? I did not know that. Our bass player Ferris would probably be. Like, oh, yeah. He's a very yeah. big Rage fan. Oh, yeah. well, have you heard the bassist uh, side project called Whack Rat? I have uh, not. It's amazing. I've heard it a little bit. And uh, last year when I did my top albums of the year, it was probably one of my top three favorite albums. Hmm. And 
it's it's really good, and he sings on it. And surprisingly, you know, for somebody that was in a band and they never did any vocals in it, mm-hmm. in Audio Slave or Rage, and then all of a sudden he's singing it, it's crazy. It seems right. like, and I I could very well be wrong here. It seems like. I read an interview with him or something like that, and Zach De La Roca was the one that kind of brought them together. In which band? Uh, in Whack Rap. It might have been. I'm not really sure about that. that particularly, but if you get a chance, they got a single out. The whole album's out now, but the single off of it's called Generation Folk, <laughs> and it's amazing. Like, it's really good. Uh, I was really hoping that they would tour this summer, but profit to us. So. But uh, it's the last day of September, First day of October, they're playing in Louisville at Champions Park at Audio Mike. So they're playing back to back, just two nights in a row. No, it's like a festival. Oh, oh. I don't know which day they're on. Um, the headliners are like Ozzy's the first night, and the second night for me, as far as I'm usually the type of guy that likes the undercard. Like yeah. I'm usually not there for the headliners. It's the up and coming bands that usually like I'm more excited for. But yeah. with this particular show, the headliners on the second day is um, Incubus, Rise Against, uh, Prophets of Rage, and it seems like a couple more. And then uh, on the first day, it's kind of mainstream rock when you got uh, you got Ozzy with Zach Wilde. And then you got mm-hmm. Five Finger Death Punch. Um, he doesn't quit again. Mastodon. Yeah. And uh, it seems like there's somebody else in there that's kind of mainstream, but... As, as far as Ivan Moody goes, like, honestly, Tommy Vex, the guy that's guest, doing guest vocals for him right now, mm-hmm. sang for Divine Heresy, and he's currently in the super group Bad Wolves, mm-hmm. and then uh, he was just recently got kicked out of Westfield Massacre. Now, he's great. If if they had to pick somebody to take over for them full time, I would be completely fine with it being him. I'll have to check some of those bands out then. Yeah, they're great. Uh, you know uh, Dino Cazares that was in the, that's in Fear Factory? Uh, guitar player? Maybe. He's, I know uh, Fear Factory. He was in Divine Heresy. And then at one point in time, the drummer in Divine Heresy, I can't remember his name, Tommy Young, I can't remember his name. Right now, but he was the fastest drummer in the world. At one point in time. <laughs> I think it's like a 16-year-old kid now or something like that. But at one point in time, he's the fastest drummer in the world. Wow. Man. So what what do we got so far? We got three? Are we done? Yeah, we've got uh Failure, Corn and Harriet. Harriet. Yeah. Right, so uh, oh man, my list sucks. Like a lot of mine like overlap with Dylan's. I, I gotta say Radiohead. <laughs> I gotta say Radiohead. Like like Johnny Greenwood and Ed O'Brien are like just they, like they just mesh so well and like they with the help of one another make some of the best arrangements like I've ever heard. Like it, it's just soundscapes for days. And like I said, just how many things they're doing live, like switching between like keyboards and like doing like vocal processors, switching out, like playing key, I already said keyboard, what am I talking about? Uh, you know, just like the excessive amount of stuff that they're doing live, it, it still boggles my mind. And I'm pretty sure they don't even run tracks. And, and too, because you have, you know, a couple similar choices, I think it just makes your chemistry all that much better because your tastes are similar. Yeah. So as a band, I think that's pretty helpful to have similar tastes, but also have different tastes too. You have to overlap somewhere. Yeah. And then with different tastes, it also allows you to reach outside the box of what you're comfortable with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, like... uh, what's the last one? Oof. I don't know, I'm probably going to make fun of this one, but All Time Low, just because I got really super into them, like in my early teenage years, like their first three or four records were like just constantly on repeat, and like they inspired me so much that I had to buy one of those SGXs that they played back in the day, and like just Alex Gaskarth, really underrated pop songwriter, and they went batshit crazy alive. Man, I like a lot of old school like stuff like that, and punk stuff, especially like a, in May also at that same show I was telling you about earlier, I seen Sing 41. Oh, nice. it, It's maybe not a band that I would go out and see on my own, like, the, you know, they're playing the show, oh, we'll go see Sing 41, but they happened to be at this festival I was going to, mm. and I was like, I'm going to make sure to catch them while I'm here, and they blew my mind. 
Yeah, I mean, they're great, and like, they've got, like, really big roots in, like, thrash metal and, like, uh, like the the new wave of uh, British heavy metal. Like, they're, like, hardcore Iron Maiden fans and yeah. Judas Priest fans and yeah. all that stuff. I mean, they you can even hear it. that, like, Pain for Pleasure, that kind of stuff on, on the first record. I know what you was going to say. There is a song where they, like, have a little snippet of, like, a Iron Maiden song or something. Uh, it's, it might be one of the bonus tracks off of uh, Does This Look Infected. Does This Look Infected was, like, just oh, yeah. such a game changer. Oh, no, uh, All Killer No Filler is the yeah. one that had Fat Lip on it. Like, uh, like, just stepping it up from All Killer No Filler to uh, Does This, uh, look, does this look Infected. Chuck it's just crazy heavy, oh, too. Yeah, they got ridiculously heavy for a while there. Like, after the first record, they they realized, hey, we're one of the biggest bands in the industry right now. Let's just do what we want. Yeah. And it was, like, just crazy. I like it too because they're not one layer of sound. Mm-hmm. Like they're not just punk. They're like they can play metal, they can play some proggy stuff. Yeah, yeah they're ridiculous. Like, it mixes stuff up to where they every song don't sound the same. Yeah, and they're not going stale either. If you've no. listened to like Screaming Bloody Murder, one of their newest albums, I mean it's yeah. The title track is amazing. one of the, like one of their best songs. And two, I can't recall their lead singer's name. Right now. Uh, Derek, Derek Weebly. Derek Weebly. Weebly. Uh, he almost died. Yeah, he almost yeah. died like a year ago. Like if he drinks alcohol. a beer, he, he's gonna die. Yeah. Pretty much. Like I mean, he's just messed himself up that bad on alcohol. Which I knew the whole backstory, you know, and like uh, all the liver problems he had from excessive drinking and stuff. Mm-hmm. And what really surprised me with with as much as he's been through because of alcoholism, is he was on stage and he was like, "Hey, everybody, drink a fucking beer." And I was like, "No." Huh. <laughs> It's kind of weird. But I guess he wants to because he else can't. to because he can't. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. But. Living vicariously. I, I think it shows, like, the strength that he has now that he can go on a huge tour like that. Yeah. Play a huge festival surrounded by beer and then. Not drink. And, like, it's just. Again, just the fact that, like, like just a tour will take a toll on you. And it's like. One day he's dying. And then, like, three months later, it's like, oh, record an album, do a big tour for it. And make a big deal out of it, and like, yeah, like it's just crazy. I don't see how he did it. If you looked up some of their newer live performances, they actually do like a fast cover of "We Will Rock You." Yeah, they played that. Really, music. it's really cool. Yeah. Now, uh, now that we're done with the bucket list, and let's do a side piece and uh, say, like, if you had to open for a band that you think you would be fitting on the same bill with, that's not on your bucket list, who would you think you'd like to open? For? God, I would almost say 741. Yeah. yeah, that'd be pretty sweet. Um, let me think. I'm going to say 741. I, I think it'd be fitting, too. I think it'd be really cool to play story, uh, play with Story of the Year just because they make us look like like nothing. Yeah. Like, I mean, like they just put on the craziest shows live. Have they got anything new out? I don't know. I haven't listened to them in a good little while. It seems like I've seen their name recently. I wasn't doing it a long time. I just remember like just their their live performances are just mind boggling. Just how much is going on? Well, yeah, both of you all have five really unique choices that the common person I don't think is going to, is going to choose. Like uh, most of the time, you know, a lot of people just name off legendary bands that they're not able to see, like the Rolling Stones or Kiss or something. I've seen both of those. <laughs> I think with y'all specifically, you have unique reasons why those five bands really make the list. And I think, uh, as, would you say that all those bands at some point influenced your musical style? Definitely. Indeed. Individually or as a band? Definitely. Well, guys, I definitely appreciate your time. For people that, that do want to hear your music again, where can they check out your Facebook and your band camp? Mm-hmm. Just... Uh, we have it on Facebook, our band camp, our Instagram, iTunes, Amazon, uh, Spotify, a website called Deezer, I think. I mean, it's on a lot of places. Uh, if you haven't heard The Pursuit of Happiness yet, you definitely want to check it out. Um, start with the first song. It's one of my favorite tracks on the album, but they're all equally as great from, from opening to close. I think the album's really awesome. Uh, check it out, and guys, we definitely appreciate your time. No problem. Thanks for having us.